Are we a lock are to get Rashard Smith? Okay, Ooh, I misread. Uh, I don't like doing percentages and locks and things like that, uh, just because we're talking about the decisions of of adolescents. Um, I think that Miami is in a very good spot for Brashard Smith. I think that Miami is doing their damnedest to recruit all of the kids, the five from Palmetto. Um, again, that being Jason Marshall, Corey Collier, Leonard Taylor, uh, Savion Collins, and Brashard Smith, the uh, Palmetto five. Um, not saying that we're going to get all of them because I don't think that any program is going to go five for five along uh, in that with those uh, all five blue chippers. But um, yeah, I think the things are, I think Brashard Smith is a perfect fit uh, as a space player in Miami's offense. Yes. I know we have Xavier Restrepo uh, already, but last I checked, you cannot have too much speed. You cannot have too much playmaking ability, especially in space. Um, and yeah. So Miami is trending up with Brashard Smith, but we'll uh, keep Moving forward, are we passing on Gil Keith Brown? He basically, since he basically held off on us for LSU, but now wants to double back on him. Um, yeah. I mean, and again, this is a thing where you can't take everybody. You know, so you already have a couple guys committed at wide receiver, Jacoby George and... Romello Brinson, oh, with my my voice on the dur idiot. Yeah, so okay, <laughs> duh. Uh, sorry, sorry, my brain went seriously blank. So you have Romello Brinson and uh, Jacoby George already committed. Just like I previously answered, you uh, Miami's pushing for Brashard Smith. So now you're going to have three guys. How many guys are you taking? At wide receiver, probably three, maybe four of Jaden Alexis from Monarch wants in, but he's trending towards Texas. But Jaden Alexis is a kid who can play anywhere. And that's a guy, again, like I was talking about earlier, if he wants a spot in this class, we're going to make it work. Where where does Euclid Brown fit? You know, we have Brinson, who's uh, All-American. You have George, who's a breakout superstar, dynamic threat to score from anywhere at any time he touches the ball. You have Brashard Smith, probably coming in this class as well. And then you held out the home run hit for a scholarship slot for a Jaden Alexis. Where does Yul Keith Brown fit in? This is the exact conversation I was talking about. If you want Yul Keith Brown on this roster, if he wants to be on this roster, which one of those players are you dropping to take him? Because you're not going to take five or six wide receivers because he just took four last year. And that would be an improper allocation of resources in terms of scholarships. So, which one of those wide receivers, Romello Brinson, Jacoby George, or Brashard Smith, are you not taking? Are you are you processing out in favor of your Keith Brown? Because that's what it's going to take. Or are you trying to short yourself, excuse me, out of defensive position? I'm not, because we need defense. And honestly, I just don't think that he is – I don't think that Yoke Brown is good enough to save one of the best available slots for just the – whatever player, you know, you know, the best available recruit. I don't think that he's the best available player in this class because I think that there are other players who could fit there uh, instead. So again, I ask if you want your Keith Brown and you're a person, and I know that there's people who are watching or listening, yo, you know, like I'm a Miami central person. I want your Keith Brown because he plays for the Rockets gang, gang, you know, whatever 95th street, all that. Yeah, 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 I got you. Which one of those guys are you getting rid of? Which one of those guys are you telling thanks but no thanks? Find your scholarship opportunity and your academic and athletic career elsewhere. Because that's what it's going to take to have a slot for you, Keith Brown. And, yes, I made that specific to you, Keith Brown, because it was asked about him. That is a situation that has happened with other players in the past. It will happen with other players in this class, and it will happen in the future. Why? Because Miami cannot take everybody from South Florida. It just can't happen. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking it down with Cam Underwood, State of the U. He provides the analysis on Miami football for us each and every week. This is now 70 shows in the books and then a zillion others with Cam before that, before we started to number them and go live. Yeah. Uh, so dig into the archives if you'd like. I've posted some recent Miami content uh, otherwise and also did a little breakdown, Cam, on the 2000 season and situation between Florida State, Miami, and Washington for the spot against Oklahoma in the national championship game. Uh, I've been taking various college football season in which there was a contested national champion or national championship game. Mm -hmm. And then especially going back to the poll era, okay, what would this have most likely looked like in the BCS era in that selection process? 
what would that most likely have looked like uh, moving it to the college football playoff era. Uh, you will enjoy that. Um, I basically determined, despite the record, that in 1990, Miami had the best football team in America. I've the seen team, that written before as well. Yeah, the team that beat Texas forty-six to three at the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, it was a very odd year in that. Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech, Colorado played in weak conferences, especially Georgia Tech, the ACC. This is pre-Florida State, Miami, weak, weak conference. Um, that they shared the national championship. Of course, Colorado with the fifth down. Plus, they actually benefited right. from a very controversial clipping penalty on a Rocket Ismail kickoff return with like 50 seconds left in the Orange Bowl that they would have lost. They could have lost actually three games. Anyway, I determined that um, there was a bunch of really good two-loss teams, Miami in the mix, that Miami, Notre Dame, Penn State, and Florida State were actually the four best teams in the country. Yeah. That would have been your playoff, a really good one in Miami. Who knows who would have won, but uh, that was my projection anyway. Uh, and then, of course, 2000, why Florida State was in the national championship game is beyond me.